As the Spanish Armada neared English shores, tension gripped the nation. The mightiest fleet in the world was set to challenge England's sovereignty, and whispers of invasion swept throughout the country. In this moment of national crisis, Queen Elizabeth I took decisive action, moving to rally her troops at Tilbury, with her most loyal subject, Robert Dudley, at the helm. The country looked to her for strength knowing the fate of the country hung in the balance. Determined to unite her people and demonstrate her unwavering resolve, Elizabeth prepared to address the army, her arrival signaling not just leadership, but solidarity with those defending the realm. It was then that she delivered one of the most iconic speeches in English history. This formidable fleet known as the Spanish Armada sent by King Philip II of Spain, aimed to overthrow Elizabeth, a Protestant monarch, and restore Catholic rule. Opposing the Spanish were the English forces based in Plymouth. The English fleet, faster and more manoeuvrable than the largest Spanish galleons, took advantage of their agility to launch attacks on the Armada as it sailed up the channel. The Armada reached Calais largely intact. But whilst waiting for communication, the fleet was attacked at night by English fireships, forcing it to scatter. The ensuing chaos led to the Battle of Gravelines, where the Armada suffered significant losses. It is thought that the result of the English fireship attack and the Sea Battle of Gravelines had not yet reached England, so Elizabeth went to Tilbury to review her forces. Here, she made a speech that has become one of the defining moments in British history. My loving people, we have been persuaded by some that are careful of our safety to take heed how we commit ourselves to armed multitudes for fear of treachery. But I assure you, I do not desire to live to distrust my faithful and loving people. Let tyrants fear. I have always so behaved myself that under God, I have placed my chiefest strength and safeguard in the loyal hearts and goodwill of my subjects. And therefore I am come amongst you, as you see at this time, not for my recreation and disport, but being resolved in the midst and heat of battle, to live and die amongst you, to lay down for my God and for my kingdom, and my people, my honor, and my blood, even in the dust. I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and the stomach of a king, and of a king of England too. And think foul scorn that Parma or Spain or any prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm, to which rather than any dishonor shall grow by me I myself will take up arms. I myself will be your general, judge and rewarder of every one of your virtues in the field. I know already for your forwardness, you have deserved rewards and crowns. And we do assure you on a word of a prince that they shall be duly paid. In the meantime, my Lieutenant General shall be in my steed than whom never prince commanded a more noble or worthy subject, not doubting but by your obedience to my general, by your concord in the camp and your valour in the field, we shall shortly have a famous victory over these enemies of my God, of my kingdom and of my people. Although there are a few versions of this speech, this is the version that is most widely accepted as being authentic. It was found in a letter from Lionel Sharp to the Duke of Buckingham. During this iconic speech at Tilbury, most accounts agree that she wore a plumed helmet and a steel cuirass over a flowing white velvet gown, wielding a gold and silver truncheon as she rode a majestic white steed. She embodied the spirit of a warrior queen. This vivid imagery resonated with her subjects. It called to mind legendary figures such as Pallas Athena, the Greek goddess of warfare. It also influenced heroines such as Britomart from Spencer's The Fairy Queen. In addition to embodying these legendary figures, Elizabeth's armor signified her readiness to 
stand and fight alongside her people. The threat of invasion never became a reality, and a few days following the Tilbury speech, the troops were disbanded. The defeat of the Spanish Armada made England a world-class power, and Elizabeth a formidable leader. It also boosted national pride. This is reflected in the Armada portrait of Elizabeth I, one of the most famous paintings of Queen Elizabeth. On the left of the painting, England's fleet observes the assault of their fireships, whilst on the right, the Armada is being shattered by storms along the coast of Scotland and Ireland. In the centre stands Elizabeth in all of her glory, her hand poised over America on a globe. She is depicted as the living embodiment of England's triumph and imperial aspirations. Elizabeth I's speech at Tilbury not only rallied her troops during a critical moment in history, but also established her legacy as a formidable leader. The speech has lasted the test of time, appearing in various forms of pop culture, from films and literature to theatrical performances. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all things weird, wonderful, and sometimes gruesome from British history.